All right, I just want to start off this by saying that, and trigger warning here, but Daenerys, she's kind of a cunt. Um, so getting into season two, or um, episode two of season seven, um, Stormborn, we're kind of got our chess pieces moving along of all of our major players kind of starting to finally get together and things are starting to get established um, for kind of how the season's going to progress. Um, this is still more of a building block type episode. There are some big action-y set PC type scenes that happen, but those are really more there near the end. We're still not dedicating a whole lot of time to any one particular storyline or character or anything like that. It's really, for the most part, evenly split. We don't spend any time with the Hound in this episode as opposed to the previous. So the beginning of the episode, um, we've got Daenerys. She's in, you know, Dragonstone. She's got all of her different advisors and that she's kind of accumulated over the course of the series um, sitting around her. And for the most part, they're all telling her that she needs to, like hell or high water she's got to take the iron throne you got to take your dragons take your unsullied take your dothraki and just go out there and just take it and then on the other side she's got like Tyrion, um who's saying that no it's probably not the quite right way because she doesn't want to be the queen of ashes um is the terms that he uses which kind of appropriate being that you know she has dragons um and you know they want her to burn everything down and start it again almost um so all in all she does decide she's gonna more go with Tyrion, but then she kind of goes on this little like left turn and she starts to turn on Virus, and she starts like really like laying into him about you know his allegiances that he's had over the course of his lifetime you know how involved was he in hiring her assassins and everything like that back all the way back in season one and all that kind of stuff and um she's really like getting after him and that i was not necessarily crazy about that i'm a really i like Virus. he's one of my favorite more favorite characters um but then he has this really good moment where he kind of stands up for himself and kind of puts her back in her place a little bit. So we move on from there. Um, then we she gets a meeting by the Red Witch that we had, uh, Melisandre, I believe is her name, from um, the previous seasons. The one that brought Jon Snow back, spoilers. Um, but um, she's the one that comes in and she starts talking to Daenerys and she tells Daenerys that she needs to meet up with Jon Snow. And that's when Tyrion kind of hears up and overhears that Jon Snow has now become the King of the North. And Tyrion goes to bat for Jon Snow, saying, you know, Jon Snow's a good guy, I know him, I trust him, yada yada, so on. Um, but then Daenerys goes even hardcore with that, it's like, yeah, you can send him a note, tell him he can come here, but he's got to bend the knee. Like, really getting after it. Um, I don't like this version of Daenerys. She's kind of a bitch. I don't use the word cunt likely, or often, but she's, I feel, very deserving. Um, so moving on, we're back into... Um, Winterfell, um, we got Jon Snow, he's got the letter from Tyrion, Tyrion's telling him, hey, you need to come over, meet Daenerys, yada, 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 so he's kind of weighing that he wants to go because it's specifically listed to him, and he feels like as the king, he's the one that needs to have those kind of conversations. None of his advisors are telling him the same thing, they're all standing up and saying, hey, no, you need to stay here, you're the king, you know, whenever your brother Ned went off, or not Ned, uh, Rob, went off, he went down south, guess what happened, his ass got killed. Ned went Get his ass killed. So you're saying here. Um, so everyone's against uh, John at this point, and even Sansa, um, Lady Mormont, the little one, everyone. And then finally, he's just like, nope, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm the king. Uh, this is my job. I'm going to go. And he leaves Sansa in charge, um, which is kind of an awkward scene because of the conversations that they had prior. And we kind of are trying to get a feel for what exactly Sansa's looking for, or looking after, or trying to get done. And you would think she'd be a little bit more like, oh yeah, now I'm in charge, but she was kind of the opposite of that. She looked like there's not much conversation going on once she became in charge, or she was told she was going to be put in charge while John was away. Um, and then we have a really, really, f I guess it's fun, I guess you could say it's fun, um, interaction between John and Littlefinger, where um, while John's down in, you know, kind of the crypt of the prior Starks, looking at it, especially Ned statue, his father, or his father, um, then Littlefinger comes down there and starts chatting him up, which, not a good look for Littlefinger, first of all. That's not the kind of guy you want to go down to the crypt and mess with. But then he starts telling him how he's in love with Sansa, and the reason he loves Sansa is because he's so much like Cat, or, you know, Ned Stark's wife, you know, John Stark's adoptive mother, or whatever you want to call her, and, you know, then John gets after him. He, like, fucking strangles him. Um, he doesn't kill him, but he kind of warns him, like, hey, if you touch my sister, I will kill you. So good for John. Littlefinger needs to kind of be put in his place. He doesn't, you know, never one ever really messes with Littlefinger, so it's kind of good to see someone finally step up and say, hey, Littlefinger, sh sh cut your shit. Um, so we move on for that. We're back over with Sam at the Citadel. Um, he is really looking into trying to be able to cure the dragon scale or the gray scale. You know, we had our little interaction with um, 
Jorah Mormont in the previous episode, we have a more of an interaction now where one of the other maesters is kind of looking over Jorah, or, uh, Jorah, and he's basically telling him, hey man, you know, you've got maybe a year, a couple years to live, um, your mind's gonna be gone in maybe a month, maybe two months, um, and they basically tell him he's got a day, and then they're either gonna kill him or they're gonna ship him off. Um, at that point, Sam kind of interjects, like, hey, you know, what about Stannis' daughter? He, she, you know, she had grayscale and or dragon scale, and you know, she survived. She had it removed, and all this kind of good stuff. And he kind of gets scolded. Um, then he goes back and says, "Hey, you know, I've seen that there's a cure for this." And again, they come back to him and like, "Hey, well, the guy who invented that cure died from dragon scale, so that's why all that stuff is forbidden because it's too risky and everything." Um, and then we have another scene where Sam sneaks into Jorah's uh, little keep or room or wherever they're keeping him in the middle of the night and attempts to cure him. From what he tells us, the cure is cutting all that nasty, gross shit right off and then just rubbing some type of um, ointment on him that's supposed to cure the infection. So we have a little really gross scene where he's cutting into his flesh, which is gross. Um, moving on from that, like I said, we don't really spend any time with the Hound. We have a very brief little bit with Cersei um, and Jaime where they're um, talking to the other lords of the Seven Kingdoms and trying to just kind of recruit an army and we're finding out not a lot of people are really interested in what Cersei's selling which I mean as we all know Cersei's kind of a bitch um, Jaime's trying to go to bat for her trying to get people to fight for her with her with him more importantly um, and it's just not really working out and that's really all the time that we spend there um, we have a, quite a bit with Arya Arya um, comes to find out, you know, she now is learning that John is the king of the north and all that stuff, and, you know, immediately, you know, she wants to go after Cersei, that's kind of what her goal was for this, was to go after Cersei and kill her, um, but upon finding out that John is in Winterfell, he's taken back Winterfell, um, she turns, and she decides she's gonna go back home, she's gonna go see her family and everything like that, so that's kind of interesting, um, kind of really shifting on that dynamic for her, especially where we saw her the end of last season, the, I mean, just even last episode, even when she um, killed all the people and all that stuff. So moving on from her, and then finally, um, the rest of the episode is really committed to um, the Greyjoys. We got um, Theon and then his sister on a boat. They're about to start laying siege um, and setting up all the plans for Daenerys. And then they get attacked by... Um, Euron, and Euron is a crazy motherfucker, he just drops down on the boat with a siege tower looking thing, and is just swinging an axe, killing people left and right, it's a, it's a ridiculous scene, like, he is just, like, berserker rage on everybody, um, so that, I mean, that was kind of cool to see, but, I mean, it, you let you know that this dude don't play around, he is crazy, like, he's, like, Mad King crazy crazy, um, and then, um, we get, we get a little interesting moment between Theon Euron and um, Theon's sister, which she her name escapes me at this moment, but basically, you know, Theon's given a choice, like, you know, go help sister or do what you're going to do, and, you know, as we've come to find out from Theon, he's kind of a little bitch, and he bails, um, and so it leaves us in a really interesting place. I think, obviously, what it is setting up is that Theon's eventually going to be the one that kills U uh, Euron and probably takes over as the king of the Iron Islands and things like that. That's just, I feel like that's coming. But I mean, again, this is Game of Thrones, so that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen. But I just feel like that's what they're attempting to set up. Um, all in all, it was a fine episode. Again, um, it's probably a little less exciting than the previous episode. We're still setting up, we're really ramping up for stuff that's about to happen. Hopefully, it actually pays off. Next week, theoretically, um, will be the episode where we have Daenerys and Jon Snow meeting for the first time. Um, Davos is there, too. I really like Davos. Uh, with Tyrion and Varys and things like that. We're going to find out what the aftermath is from Euron destroying the Iron Ar um, the Iron Isle fleet thing and everything that uh, Daenerys had. And kind of see where all that's going, um, how that's going to throw a wrench into her plans. Um, I imagine we'll probably spend more time with Cersei next week just because we spent so little time with her now. Um, I really would like to get back to the Hound. He's, again, one of my favorite characters. So I'd really like to get into that. But all in all, I thought it was a it was a decent episode. I mean, it's not a bad episode. I wouldn't say it's a top ten episode, obviously. Um, it's just, it's an episode. Um, it it kind of drug on and a little bit in the middle. I thought the Cersei stuff in this particular episode was a little irrelevant. Um, we didn't really learn anything more that we didn't know. Cersei's a bitch. People don't like her. So that's kind of what we already knew. So we're moving on from there. But um, anyway, guys, let me know what y'all think down below about this episode. Um... Is there anything I missed? Any hot topics that you want to discuss? Anything like that? Let me know and we will see y'all next time.